The Jack Benny program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. At 49, American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. LSMFT. 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 That's right. Yes, sir. And how? Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Here's what Mr. Edwin Lee Moore, independent tobacco buyer and warehouseman of Greenville, North Carolina, said. For many years, I've been in a good position to know the facts about who buys what tobacco at the auctions I follow every season. And in all this time, I've seen Lucky Strike by light, naturally milder leaf that makes a milder, more enjoyable smoke. My own cigarette for 16 years has been Lucky Strike. Yes, Mr. Edwin Lee Moore has been there. He knows. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. From the Plaza Theater in Palm Springs, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's house here in Palm Springs. It's an hour before showtime, and Jack is taking a nap. Rochester is going quietly about his duties. I'm always chasing rainbows, watching clouds drifting by. My schemes are just like all my dreams. Ending in the sky Some fellows seem to have the good thing But all I do is sit and pine Some fellows make a seven sometimes But I can't even throw a nine Believe me uh, Rochester I'm always chasing rainbows Rochester well, boss, I see you got your little blue eyes open. I hope my singing didn't wake you up. Yes, it did, Rochester, but I just had the most wonderful dream. Really? You know, I dreamt I was listening to Fred Allen's program. He went down to Allen's Alley, knocked on all the doors, and there was nobody home. What a lull. <laughs> and then I dreamt his program was so bad, his sponsor came in and threw him off the air. <laughs> Allen couldn't get another job, and he sang lower and lower. And then I dreamt it became a bum on Broadway, mooching nickels and dimes for something to eat. <laughs> what are you laughing at? If you'd have slept about five minutes longer, you'd have to send him flowers. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was a wonderful dream. I wonder what he dreams about me. He wouldn't waste his time on you, boss. He's still young enough to dream about the opposite sex. <laughs> Oh, no, he isn't it. Say, Rochester, what time is it? 3.25. Oh, my goodness, I told Miss Livingston to drop by here at 3.30. I better hurry. Uh, what kind of show are you going to do today, boss? Oh, just something informal, nothing special. Probably ad-lib a lot. You know. Oh, Jack, Jack, come on. We'll be late for the show. Right with you, Mary. See you after the broadcast, Rochester. Goodbye. Bye. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Gee, you look nice. Say, where were you last night? Why, Jack, I was at the barn dance at Roger's Stables with... Oh, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, come on, Mary. Who are you dancing with? No, I'm not going to tell you. Come on, Mary. Don't keep seeking to me. Who are you dancing with? You, you dope, and you fell asleep. <laughs> huh? Oh, yes, that's right. I had Ovaltine for dinner. <laughs> Say, Mary, isn't Palm Springs a nice little town? It's all right, I guess. Yeah, look at that cute date shop. You know, this desert is famous for dates. I know, I know. And look at this place next to it. Florist and date shop. Look. Yeah. 
Gee, it's such a cute town. Pardon me, Miss Livingston. May I have your autograph? Why, certainly. Gee, thank you. Oh, look, Mary, look, look at that little place across the street. Cleaners, dyers, and date shop. I sent my suit there, and it came back so sticky. Before they press it, they put samples in your pockets. <laughs> But this is the cutest little town, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Miss Livingston, would you give me your autograph, please? Well, surely. Here you are, honey. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Mary. Mary, look, here's the place where I bought my spurs. Where? Right here. Boots, saddles, harness, date shop. <laughs> you know, Mary, there's something about this town that's so relaxing and restful. No wonder so many people come here. Uh-huh. Miss Livingston? Yes? Miss Livingston, would you give me your autograph, please? Oh, I'll be glad to. Here you are. Thank you very much. You know, Jack, this is a cute little town. What's cute about it? <laughs> you know, Mary, you turned out to be the biggest ham I ever saw, signing autographs all the time. Oh, you're just mad because they didn't ask you. I am not. Oh, Jack, look at this place. Blacksmith shop and date parlor. <laughs> oh, yeah, and look at the sign. Under the spreading palm tree, the village smithy stands. I bet the muscles on his brawny arms stand out like stuffed dates. <laughs> well, here we are at the stage door. Oh, Jack, there's a little hot dog, man. Let's get a hot dog. Okay, we have a few minutes' time. Pickle in the middle and your mustard on top. Just the way you like him and the whole red hot. Well, I see you're still in town. Uh, two hot dogs, please. Crumple puppies coming up. Uh, would you like to have them serve the Palm Spring style? What do you mean, Palm Spring style? Well, that's with pickle, mustard, and sun pen oil. Just the, uh, just the pickle and the mustard, please. Okay. Do you want the pickle in the middle and the mustard on top, or the mustard in the middle and the pickle on top? <laughs> well, uh... Have you got any horseradish? Horseradish doesn't go with hot dogs. I know. I just wanted to see where you'd put it. <laughs> Mary, we haven't time to fool around. Give me my two hot dogs, please. Here you are. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top, just the way you like it. In the <laughs> Come on, Mary, here's the stage. We better get on. <laughs> oh, Harris, you're so pretty, it's too bad you're not two-faced. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going Mary, like to we must this... be late. Hey, Phil! What? Jackson, hold it. I'm just going into a band number. Gee, my watch must be wrong. Yeah, you never should have bought it at that date shop. <laughs> I guess you're right. Go ahead, Phil. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. 
Come to Baby Do, played by Phil Harris and his melancholy music makers. <laughs> melancholy meaning half of them have heads like melons, <laughs> and the other half look like collies. <laughs> Except Frankie, the guitar player. He looks a little like a St. Bernard there. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jackson. Frankie may be shaggy, but he don't look like no St. Bernard. Then why has he got a keg of brandy around his neck? <laughs> because when he comes to an eight-bar rest, he ain't gonna just sit there doing nothing. <laughs> oh. Well, can't he just sit there and listen to the music? That's what drove him to drink. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> what a band. Well, let's get on with the show now that I'm here. Oh, hello, Don. Where have you been? Well, I just stepped out to get a package of Luckies. A package of Luckies? Where'd you get them? In the lobby, out of that cigarette and date machine. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, Don, I wouldn't eat any of those dates if I were you. They're fattening, you know, and you're not exactly Tom Thumb, you know. <laughs> well, I know, Jack, but since I've been down here in Palm Springs, I don't look so big. That's only because they have so many mountains here. <laughs> Take my word for it, you are, shall we say, a trifle obese? Yes, we'll say it. Obese. I don't know, Jackson. There are plenty of guys that are obeser than Don. <laughs> obeser? Phil, that word isn't even in Webster's Dictionary. How do you like that? I'm smarter than Webster. <laughs> well, don't let Webster find it out. He'd probably be upset. Now, let's get out. Come in. Yes? Mr. Benny, my name is Streeby. I'm the manager of this theater and date shop. Oh. Oh, hello, Mr. Streeby. Hello. Uh, step right... This is the real manager. Step right up the microphone, Mr. Streeby. Don't be nervous. A little closer, you know. After all, this is your theater, you know. You, you didn't have to pay to get in, you know. I had to rent the joint. I mean, <laughs> Mr. Treby, I'm glad you dropped in. I've been anxious to find out if you ran my picture here. Yes, we did, Mr. Benny, uh, quite recently. Good, good. No, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what do you mean? Well, we ran your picture Saturday and Sunday, and it turned out to be a double feature. Double feature? Yes, the horn blows at midnight on the screen, and lost weekend at the box office. <laughs> Funny, I can't understand why the picture didn't do well. You know? Neither can I. You know, this isn't like the East. When business is bad, we can't blame it on the weather. Hmm. <laughs> Come to think of it, that picture did do better in the cooler climate. Yeah, Warner Brothers got a letter from three Eskimos saying it was the best film they ever ate. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Well, I'll be right along now. I just dropped in to see if there was anything you need. Nothing at all, but thanks very much. Goodbye, Mrs. Streeby. Oh, say, Mr. Benny. How do you like that? A guy gets a laugh, you can't get rid of him. <laughs> now, now what? Mr. Benny, I don't want to get personal, but I always thought you were, wore a toupee. Well, this is Palm Springs. Everybody goes around with the top down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Streeby. Uh, goodbye. Oh, Mr. Benny... Never mind. Goodbye. <laughs> Everybody comes in here with jokes, no dates. <laughs> Can't understand why he was so nervous at the microphone. I was right up here with him. Yeah, but after the broadcast, you leave town. He has to stay here. <laughs> I suppose so. Well, it's time for a song. Where's Larry? Here I am, Mr. Benny. Uh, what are you going to sing tonight, kid? A brand new novelty song called Pickle in the Middle. Pickle in the Middle? <laughs> Say, isn't that what the, what the little hot dog man sings? Yes, Carl Sigman and John Tackerberry wrote a song around it. Tackerberry. John Tackerberry. <laughs> I've heard that name somewhere before. He's one of your writers. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> He's the one with the lowest forehead. <laughs> his nose makes a natural part in his hair. <laughs> let's hear the song, Larry. Come on, let's hear it. <laughs> Wants any peanuts today. 
The peanut man, the ice cream man, shout their wares like nobody can, like nobody can, except one man, favorite funny old Frankfurter man, pickle in the middle and the mustard on top, just the way you like them and they're all red hot, tasty little hot dog toasted right, with the bark as tender as its bite, everybody's happy and the laughter runs high. Till the sun gets pickled in a sauerkraut sky What's a little raindrop when you've got Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top Peanuts Nobody wants any peanuts or ice cream today Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top Just the way you like it and they're all red hot Tasty little hot dog tasted right With the bark as tender as its bite What's a little raindrop when you've got Pickle in the middle Sizzling on the griddle Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top the middle sung by Larry Stevens with the mustard on top. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce a guest, rather unusual to radio. The gentleman I'm about to present is a writer at Paramount Studio. He is also a noted critic and the author of articles which appear in the country's leading magazines. Also the author of Seven Lively Arts. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gilbert Seldy. Uh, Mr. Seldes, I'm very, very happy to have you on my program. Thank you, Mr. Benny. May I ask you a question? Why, certainly. Go right ahead. Just why did you invite me to come over here today? What's the purpose of my appearance? Mr. Seldes, did you or did you not write an article that appears in the March issue of Esquire magazine? Mr. Benny, I write an article in every issue of Esquire. Answer yes or no. <laughs> yes. Now, in this article, Mr. Seldes, did you or did you not state that radio comedy today is based primarily on sarcastic humor and insulting jokes? I did. Hmm. <laughs> he admits it yet. In that article, Mr. Seldes, you said that comedians have been insulting each other so much that radio has become a source of boredom. That is correct. And to prove my point, Mr. Benny, take your program today. You insulted Phil Harris's orchestra, Miss Livingston ridiculed your dancing, and even the theater manager who came in unprepared had to make a slurring remark about your toupee. Yes, yes, he even panned my picture. Well, that he couldn't help. <laughs> I see. Then, uh, Mr. Seldes, uh, what you meant by your article in Esquire is that you would like to hear a comedy program with a delicate neighborly motif. Something sweet and homely. Sort of a Mark Perkins with a band. <laughs> is, that, is that what you meant? Well, I was only trying I to... know what you were trying to do, Mr. Sally. <laughs> and the fuel program would sound the way you would like to hear it. Sit down, Mr. Selby. Thank you. <laughs> Jack, why make such an issue of it? Because I'm here to defend radio. Radio to me is bread and butter in a swimming pool. <laughs> All right, kids. Let's do a nice, sweet program like Mr. Seldes prefers. Phil, is the harpist ready? Yeah, Jackson, the dame just came in. <laughs> All right, now we'll take it right from the very beginning. Ready, Don? Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lucky Strike Program. Uh, 
And now, dear listeners, from Palm Springs, one of the most beloved spots in the sunny state of California, we bring you your genial Sunday night host, Jack Life Can Be Beautiful, Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. May I come into your home for just a short half hour? Hmm? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, Don, hasn't our stay in Palm Springs been delightful? Oh, it certainly has, Jack. And Don, I hope you won't mind commenting, but uh, I just can't get over how thin you are. You're so unobese. <laughs> really? Well, Jack, I may be less obeser, but I wish I had all your hair. Well, you know how it is, Don. We just can't have everything. <laughs> Can we? Well, look who's here. Mary Livingston. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mary. Or is it Mary, Mary? Plain as any name could be. Could be. But with propriety, so my little Mary It was Mary, Mary Long before the fashions came There's something of that uh, That has sound so uh, square It's a grand old name Oh, how I love it Mary is a grand old name is a grand old name, and you're a grand little girl. How are you, sweetheart? Oh, I'm just ginger peachy with a mustard on top. <laughs> you always are. And doll face. Yes. <laughs> I'll never, never be able to thank you for the beautiful necklace you gave me. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing? Jack, it's just like you to be so modest. What kind of a necklace did he give you, Mary? A string of 150 perfectly matched dates. <laughs> Well... And imported from Anaheim. Well, I always get the best, man. You know, I strung them myself on one of my violin strings. Oh, Snoogie, you shouldn't have taken this. <laughs> now you won't be able to play it. Well... Just a minute, Mr. Benny. I didn't mean... Sit down, to... Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. Wait till Phil Harris comes in with a glass of milk. Ah, here comes Philip now. <laughs> Phil, aren't you a little late? Yes, Jason, and I'm frightfully sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but on the way down here, I passed the most tempting little fruit juice stand, and I just couldn't resist having a glass of that sun-kissed orange juice. Orange by Phil, I thought you drank milk. Only at parties to be sociable, Jason. <laughs> oh. You can't be an old deadhead, you know. Of course not. Say, Phil, we've had so many requests from our listeners <laughs> for you to sing a number on the program. How about doing one now? All right, I'll sing two courses of That's What I Adore About Dixie. <laughs> Oh, that'll be just two, two. Uh, two, two, what's that? That's four, the hard way. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Phil. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Benny. Evidently, you didn't understand the point of my Mr. article. Mr. Southies, so you brought it on yourself. Now, sit down. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, yes. Say, Phil, before you do your number, I meant to ask you, uh, wasn't your first violinist with the Philadelphia Symphony Orchestra? Yes, for seven consecutive, and I might add, lucrative years. <laughs> I thought so. And the gentleman there on the end, wasn't he associated with the Boston Symphony? Yes, for three seasons he played obese. That's all ball. <laughs> Thanks, Webster. You're welcome, Phil. As a matter of fact, all your boys are symphony men, aren't they? Yes. And how come they all look like dogs? <laughs> Mr. Sullies, apparently you haven't read your article in Esquire. Now, go ahead, Phil. Let's oh, have your... Oh, just number. a minute, Jack. 
first, do you mind if I say a few words about the one thing that is so near and dear to the hearts of each and every one of us? By all means, Don. In fact, Jack, I'd, I'd like to sing it and have you assist me. Assist you? Yes, uh, with this bird whistle. Oh, you mean like this? Yes, that's it. It's a deal. Go ahead, Don. L-S-M-F-T is just the cigarette for me. Lucky strike means fine tobacco, L-S-M-F-T. With men who know tobacco best, it's lucky's to the one. So round, so firm, so fully, fully packed. Very good, Don, very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Phil, watch your baton. And now, uh... <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, oh, fudge, there's the phone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Oh, yes, yes, Rochester, why are you calling? Something's gone wrong with the radio. What do you mean? Don Wilson got thin, you got hair, Mr. Harris drinks milk, and Mary's a grand old name. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, Rochester, we're trying a new formula where everything is quiet and sweet. Quiet and sweet? Yes. Well, boss, you better get loud and funny. Your swimming pool ain't paid for yet. <laughs> yes, I guess you're right, Rochester. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, Mr. F.E. Boone. At 40, say, 49, American. L.S.M.F.T. Remember that when it comes to your cigarette, L.S.M.F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Yes, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. This fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, out of 49, American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. L.A. 40, This is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. You get real deep down smoking enjoyment when you smoke that smoke of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Mr. Sellies, I want to thank you very much for being our guest here this evening. Now, we did the program both ways, our way and your way. Which did you like better? Well, after being on your program, I admit my article was all wrong. You do? Yes, Jack. I think it's better when they insult you. <laughs> I knew you'd see it. Wait a minute, Mr. Seldes. Mr. Seldes. He's gone, Jack. Oh, well, I'll see him later. Good night, folks. It's over. It's over. It's <laughs> over. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.